You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Zane State's Tony Mayo talks about some exciting free programs at the college. Sheriff Jeff Payton and Jerry Leister discuss neighborhood watch groups, and then Sheriff Payton sticks around to talk about 911. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to this brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Hey, the kids are back in school right now, so watch out for them when you're driving. Okay, just keep an eye out for them. Tony Mayo is my first guest on this show. He is the Career Exploration and Readiness Coordinator at Zane State College. He's been on the show before talking about some great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thank Good you. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Um, you want, like me to tell a little bit about the Career Exploration Program? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a program specific to Guernsey County residents. I serve youth between the ages of 18 to 24. And either youth, what, what the government will call at risk youth with temporary barriers. So these are youth with whether they have an offender record, uh, whether they have the mental health diagnosis, single parent, mother, father, generational unemployment, generational poverty. So my goal is kind of either to get them back on track again or develop a new path with them. When I first meet them, we set up goals. Uh, we work on career discovery, uh, job, job readiness skills, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So yeah. we kind of try to get them back on track again. You know, so many, so many times, you just these kids kind of get discarded or shuffled yeah. into yeah. the system, and it's so refreshing <laughs> when you provide for them a, a way out, not only a way out, but a way up. Yeah. Well, thank you. We, we've had good success rates so far. Um, I've been doing it in Guernsey County area, Cambridge area, for two and a half years, almost three years, and I have several students that attend Zane State College, several that have gotten employed, and so on and so forth. So it's a good program. Now, the uh, Career Exploration Program, does it have any limitations? Yeah, yeah. There are limitations. You have to be a Guernsey County resident, and you have to be between the age of 18 and 24. Okay. And, of course, you have to have a, a t what they call a temporary barrier, too, such as one I just mentioned. Before we go on, I wanted to just get a little of your background. How did you get involved with this, this particular type of program? Well, I got involved in this with one of my, my, one of my particular degree in mental health counseling as well as rehabilitation counseling. I'm a long, long life learner, but I'm also from the area, southeastern Ohio. I live in Morgan County, and I've always wanted to give back to the community as well as give back to the youth. My belief is all youth should have the possibility of either higher education or employment. So that's my goal. And before this, I, I've worked in taught it or taught it and attended OU as well as Hawking College so I love you know this area as well as Dane State College direction they're going okay this is a free program yes correct? yes it is okay yeah yeah absolutely free and one of the enticing aspects of it and you, you, when you transition from my program you get a free laptop or tablet for participating Whoa. and of course achieving your goals yeah, that is very enticing yeah, but yeah. again that's after you complete, go through yeah, complete yeah. the program and completion or transition is based on individual you know some individuals need less time and some need more time in regards to reaching their goals as well as when I think they're ready to transition from the program do you find that an incentive does help Oh, of course, of course. Not only incentive, but that certificate of completion at the end. But I've had some students that aren't interested in the incentive. Okay. They, they want, want the, the, the information that's within the program. And what, what does that open up once they have that certificate? What then will that or can well, that open up for them? With the majority of my students that attend the college at Zane State College, they get into the Quick Start program, which we're going to talk about next, or they just start taking college classes. I've had um, five in, in working in the summer youth program with uh, Ohio Mean Job, Job and Family Services over the summer. So, and, and many gain employment too. We work on resumes too, and I've got to know a lot of local employers as well as the court systems here and in the mental health centers as well. So. Okay, and like you said, the career exploration program kind of uh, segues or, or, or leads to the Quick Start program. Yeah, yeah, Let's exactly. go ahead and talk about Quick Start. Well, well Quick Start is, is, isn't a new program. It's actually older than my program. It, it does not have any restrictions. So with any age, you don't have to be a resident of Guernsey County. <clears throat> and they do a lot of similar things I do uh, in regards to college readiness. They focus more on college readiness com compared to job skills. So they'll um, you know, help with financial aid for them. This is really hard for a lot of students to mm -hmm. work on and mm -hmm. utilize as well as their parents. Mm -hmm. We'll work on college applications. But most importantly, in my opinion, 
is we work on career discovery. And we'll work on English and math skills. A lot of time you go in, you know, wondering if you're at that level in regards to achieving in, high, in, in college. So we work on the math and English skills as well and kind of get them back on path again. Now, it doesn't mean you have to enter Zane State College, um, but a lot are enticed because of, of the in, in incentive we offer for Quick Start program as well. You know, you, you talked about discovery, career discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, it just maybe kind of give them some ideas of what they would want to do. Yeah, exactly. We do. We utilize several personality assessments, um, and then we connect that with federal government website in regards to employment and, and careers. And then they list things such as um, outlook for the next ten years, salary range, area of the country where their jobs would be most found, as well as the duties on their job. So some students have a fantasy that I want to be a radio broadcaster, but um, I don't. Really Really know what they do. I know what they make. I don't, don't know what they do. So a lot of the websites ran by the U.S. Department of Labor have those duties listed, which makes it very nice. And uh, the Salvation Army here in Cambridge comes into play with this yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, it right? does. Uh, this is we're really making that connection with local Salvation Army as well as that area of Guernsey County and or slash Cambridge. Uh, we know, you know. Poverty and the transportation issues may be a barrier. So, yes, yeah, so we do have a class in there starting September 12th is the start day for Quick Start. And they, they will have a class in the evenings that I'll be teaching at the Salvation Army. Okay, so you'll so. be hands-on with, yeah, with that I will. class. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Does that seem to be a, a really good fit? For yeah, you guys. yeah, yeah, I think so. So what we've been uh, toying with the idea, what we've done um, in the past is we, we transition them at Salvation Army first, so they spend half of the time there, okay. and then we'll kind of bus them to the main campus, which is up here in Cambridge, okay. to have them get used to that college atmosphere as but well. But it's all about getting used to it. Yeah, transition. Transition, yeah. okay. How can folks find out more, or how can somebody watching sign up for the program? For my program? Yeah. Now, my program, you contact me, Tony Mill, 740 588-4148. And for the Quick Start program, you will contact Wendy Coyle at 740-588-1294. Okay. A couple of great programs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I hope, you know, folks, if you're out there watching and, and uh, it interests you, get a hold of these folks and sign up today and see, see where you can go. I want to let you know the Quick Start program, you also receive two free college credits once you complete oh. it. That's another enticement right there. It is pretty awesome. Yeah. Tony Mayo, the Career Exploration and Readiness Coordinator at Zane State College. Right. Thank you for Thanks coming for having today. Me. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank, you. Thank you. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town right after this short break. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the classic difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. 
Welcome back and thank you for watching Talk of the Town. Adam and I really appreciate you watching. We, sure we really do. Joining me in studio now, we're pleased to have Guernsey County Sheriff Jeff Payton and Jerry Leister, who is the Guernsey County Neighborhood Watch Coordinator. Gentlemen. Sir. Sir. Thank, thank you for that. Yes, thanks for having us. Um, neighborhood Watch, um, what's it all about? This is uh, the way the public can get out there and have eyes and ears for the Sheriff's Office. And not only Sheriff's Office, but other police departments also. We need help from uh, the citizens in order to report crimes, uh, to watch for drug houses, to get license plates. This is a way to get something organized, to streamline it straight to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, so we can get extra eyes and ears out there. And this is a big help to the sheriff's office because just of the vast, the sheer size of the county. Absolutely. You can't be everywhere at one time. We can. We have 528 square miles of county to cover. That's a lot of county. And a lot of people know that. The bad people know that. And they, they want to venture out into the county and, and start up their drug houses. And that's why we need people to report it. And yeah, and that, you, that. you and I talked, you know, uh, who would have thought 20 years ago that we'd be talking 8, 10, 12, 14 drug houses? Exactly. You know? And then, you know, we don't want it in our county. No, we want it not at all. Right. Not at all. Jerry, this is where you come in. So how, how do you start this? How do you build a neighborhood watch program? Well, we have meetings. We uh, go around and uh, put flyers on everybody's houses and tell them about the meetings. Um, we go to the meetings and the main purpose is to, for us to take back our communities from the undesirables. I remember when we started in Cumberland a little over a year ago, uh, we had uh, eight or nine drug houses. Now we're down to two. We've cut the sheriff's runs down That's over 50%. Awesome. They can do something else. What we do, we just observe and report. That's our, our main thing. Like. The sheriff says, uh, see something, say something. Okay. And that's what we do. I know the first thing that people would think would be, well, I don't want to get involved because they could find out who I am. But you've set this up in such a way that that doesn't happen, right? Yeah, we have a program. We have a major NATO organization. We have uh, some captains and then the colonel's in charge. Let's say uh, Mrs. Smith's an old lady. She don't want people to know that she turned in somebody. So she'll tell the captain, and then the captain will turn them in. There, so, so she's out of the loop, but she really furnishes the information. So do you, do you find that, that more people are, are willing to get involved uh, if that's the case? Yes. Yeah, we have uh, we have 40-some people in Cumberland involved. Wow. That we have on the rosters. Plus there's some more that's not on the rosters that help us also. So when you got 40 people, you got like, just like Jeff ordered, uh, 40 more but detectives but at no cost to the county. If we can get this up to 500, then we're going to have 500 detectives at no cost to the county. And that's the program. Is this something that you'd like to see in all parts of the county? Oh, absolutely. Um, what Cumberland has done, it's a model program for everybody else to, to follow. And that's why Jerry is able to help. Um, he's going to go to all these meetings and he's not going to be the, the manager of it, or, but he's going to help set it up along with the sheriff's office. And, and what we do is we go out and train also. We'll train Neighborhood Crime Watch on what to look for, the different types of drugs, uh, the different um, you know, cars, why are they com coming in and out, how to get a plate. But we don't want them in harm's way at all. Sure. At all. But uh, it's really good education. And then once they're in the program for a while, we were talking about this uh, at the other meeting, it, it'll change the way they look at people and they'll really be more observant about their surroundings. Wow. So what areas are you? You have the one in Cumberland now. Are there other areas in the county that you have programs set up right now? Uh, like I said, we had the organizational meeting last night in Pleasant City for Pleasant City Valley Townships, which also would be Buffalo as a Valley Township. Um, we have had, I've had a call from the people over behind Meadowbrook High School. Maybe we're going to form one over there next and try to get that area. But the deal is to go all the way around the county, give everybody the opportunity to participate, and hoping that everybody will participate. In a perfect world, you wouldn't need these. Exactly. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. You wouldn't need me if we lived in a perfect world. Exactly, exactly. And I wouldn't get to sit down and talk to you, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole right. other story because I enjoy it. Yeah, same here. But um, this does have to help you out tremendously. It does. And and once you get the buy-in from the, from the public, it's, it's really going to help us out. Like I said, they have told us many things going on in Cumberland that we've caught the bad guy. Um, with warrants, with uh, possession of drugs. Um, like I said, it's a model program. And, and if anybody would ever want to um, 
look into this, they could call Jerry and Jerry will give you his phone number or they can call the sheriff's office and then I'll tell Jerry about it. But you need to just attend one of his meetings. Um, and you're going to see the sheriff's office. Uh, we train you pretty well, too. Well, Jerry, I, you know, I, I think this is something that we all, because we all should get involved in because we all care. People in exactly. Guernsey County care about Guernsey County and their community. Right, yeah. And uh, about the meetings, uh, Cumberland has theirs on the third Thursday of the month at 6.30 at the firehouse. This coming month, uh, anybody that wants to come, they're bringing their new canine dog over and oh, going okay. to show it to us because we helped uh, purchase that dog by a fundraiser through the neighborhood watch. Also, uh, Pleasant City has established theirs. There's going to be at one, uh, the first or third Monday of the month at uh, St. Michael's Church in uh, Pleasant City at 7 o'clock. Now, the Cumberland one's at the firehouse. So. Okay. And they, anybody who needs to reach me can reach me at 740-638-5028 or 740-255-0105. Okay. Or they can call the sheriff and they'll leave a message. Okay. It sounds good. But I, it's just a tremendous thing. Yeah. It is tremendous. We need and, to take and, back our county. And really think about, folks, think about the community where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, man, I wish I could really do something to help. This is the perfect way to do it. They can come out, train you, and you can have a neighborhood watch set up right. in your community. Yes, sir. I think I'm going to do that. Yes, sir. So, That'd be great. I've been talking with Guernsey County Sheriff Jeff Payton and Jerry Leister, the uh, Guernsey County Neighborhood Watch Coordinator. It's tremendous what you guys are doing. Jerry, thank you so much for, for taking the initiative to do this. Yeah, I want people to know I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid by the county. Okay. I do all this with my own free, free okay. will. And I think you're going to stick around for the next segment. And yes, we're going to talk more. Guernsey County Sheriff stuff. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right, Jerry, thanks for coming Thank in. You. Thank hey, you. Hey, back with Sheriff Jeff Payton right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Hope you're having a great day today. It's always a, a, a treat when we can get this guy to stick around with us for more than one segment because... You're going to find out what's going on in Guernsey County. Guernsey County Sheriff Jeff Payton joining us again. Thank you so much for sticking around. Well, can I thank you guys for doing such a great job? Well, you and your you and your crew do an awesome job. Well, we, we appreciate that. We no appreciate problem. that very much. But you wanted to stick around and talk about something that is very, very important to Guernsey County, and it has to do with 911, correct? It is. And unfortunately, we've had some mandates come down from uh, the state. Um, that I have no control of, uh, citizens have no control of. But um, at our office, we have one dispatcher per shift. Mm -hmm. It's a huge task for that one dispatcher mm -hmm. per shift. We have 15 fire departments. Uh, they have five law enforcement agencies. They have to deal with 911 calls. Um, the numbers are staggering, really, if I could get it, if I were to get into that. 
So the state has mandated us since we have what's called the PSAP. The PSAP is all the wireless 911 calls that come into the sheriff's office. We get all of them for Guernsey County. In Cambridge, wherever you're at, if you have a cell phone, we have, we have control of the PSAP. They're mandating us to have two dispatchers a shift because our dispatchers have to be what's called EMD certified, emergency medical dispatchers. And I want people to understand that mandated by the state. You have no say over this. I have no say over this, no. Um, like I say, we're one of a handful of, of counties in, in Ohio. Mm -hmm. There's 88 counties and we're one of a handful full that only have one dispatcher a shift. Um, so the EMD uh, certified dispatcher, what that's gonna do is, is if you call in with a medical emergency, or you're having, somebody's having a heart attack, anything medical, um, our dispatcher will stay on the line with you until a squad gets there. And we will have a program that we'll have to buy and it's pretty dang on costly. But in that program, we will type in, the dispatcher will type in heart attack mm -hmm. and it'll give them step by step on what to do to help that individual. So okay. it's, it's a really it, unfortunate that I have to ask for money. Sure. Because I don't like to do that. Sure, we know I, you don't. Yeah, because yeah. I know everybody's taxed out, but this is something that I think is gonna be really beneficial to the county. Okay, what kind of money are you looking for? And we're talking about a levy here, aren't yes, we? Yes, sir. Um, we're talking about a one mil. Um, one mil does not mean $1 million. Uh, we're hoping it's gonna generate about eight hundred to $900,000. It'll cost the average household, if you have a $100,000 home, $35. Um, but the big part of this is if, if we can't get this passed, we're gonna lose our PSAP, our 911 PSAP. Totally lose, it'll be gone. It'll be gone. Now you'll have capabilities on landlines to call in 911, but all cell phone calls will go, say for instance, Franklin County. They'll answer your 911 call, give you medical advice, but you're going to lose the personal touch of the sheriff's office. And again, it's going to Franklin County. It's going to Franklin County or whatever county would pick up that, that fee. Um, and most people today, I know, you know, are, are cutting the landline, yes. just going straight with the cell phone. Exactly. So if you take that into consideration, you're going to be talking to Franklin County. You're not going to be talking to Guernsey County if you lose this. You're correct. Um, I have confidence in the, in the citizens that they'll pass it. I mean, even though they're taxed, and, and I get that. And I've tried a sales tax, but we're already tapped out on sales tax. Sure, sure. Um, but we don't want somebody else answering our, our calls. What this extra money, we should have a little extra money um, with this levy after we pay salaries and computer equipment update and things. But what we want to do is enhance the fire departments, our volunteer fire departments radio system. How will that do that? Well, we want to enhance it by, uh, we'll probably all go to Mark's, um, which is a state ran um, radio system. If we're all on the same channel, same system, mm. um, we can communicate with mm -hmm. each other better and with, uh, with the other agencies. And also what we have, we have an alerts program. It's a CAD system, and this is getting deep into tech stuff, but mm -hmm. we want each fire department to have at least one computer that we can route them to calls, keep track of their times for them. It's just gonna be more efficient, and they can see other units that's coming to help respond to a fire. And, and, and it's got a mapping system, so they don't have to you know, look at a map to, to be routed to a call. Yeah, when you're, when you're talking about emergencies, you're talking about seconds, you're talking about possibly minutes. Exactly. And you need to have something go on in those seconds or those minutes. That's where the enhancement will come into play and help. Exactly, and, and I don't even know how it would work. You know, say Franklin County answers our 911 call. Are they gonna stay on the line? Obviously they have to because they're emergency medical dispatchers. They'll have to stay on the line with you with your medical emergency, call us to get us en route to you. That's gonna take seconds, minutes, to, uh, to, to run that through. Whereas if we kept it at home, we would have more of a personal touch on where we're going. Yeah, and, and, and anything like this, when you're talking about what you do or emergencies, you want to keep it as close to your home as possible. Absolutely. Um, like John by the Big Red Barn. Mm -hmm. We might all know where John lives. I mean, yeah. we're only a, a county of 41,000 people. Yeah. And we have uh, 22 deputies on the road. So we're going to know people. We're going to have that personal touch. And, even though we send a squad, we're gonna hear that call, we're gonna be in route two to try to help. Whereas if, it, if it's answered in another county, we might not have that personal touch. Wow, so this will be on the ballot then? This will be on the, this the upcoming will, ballot? Uh, this will be on November's. Um, I'm just want, trying to get the word out. I'm willing to come and talk to any organization. Okay. Um, you can call down the sheriff's office, uh, ask for my uh, extension, and they'll, they'll get, get you my extension. I'm, 
I'll come and speak to you about it. I think in, in the key, and this is what key to me in this whole conversation that we're just having are the words mandated and lose. Yeah, right. It's mandated by the state, meaning Sheriff Payton has no say whatsoever. It has to do it. If it isn't done, then they're going to lose the 911 capabilities, the cell phone service capabilities. Yes, and we don't want to lose any of that. And, and Guernsey County, I know, is tapped out, but the commissioners do not have the money to, to forward me that kind of money either. Um, once again, i got to come back to you, the people, and ask, ask to pass this levy. And again, if you know, if you need more information, you're willing to talk with folks, oh, come and meet with them to absolutely. find out what's going on. No hidden, hidden agenda here. The money will be used for that. It will be used for dispatchers, radios, um, equipment and dispatch. No hidden agenda on the money. Um, and it, sh it should be a fabulous system. Yeah, and this is something, folks, that directly um, affects you. Absolutely. It directly affects you. Just kind of like what we talked about with uh, yourself and, and Jerry, uh, the last segment about the neighborhood watch. This directly affects the folks in Guernsey County. Yeah, and real quick, um, each county has a, uh, a s your cell phone in our county. We get a little percentage of your bill, which we use that money to enhance our system and stuff like that. We'll lose that money too, totally which helps up in, up in our dispatch area, too. I so. didn't know that. Yes, sir. I didn't it, know. it generates about sixty or $70,000 a year, and so, that's what we use to update our equipment and keep our equipment running. So that's a little line that says, to Sheriff Jeff Payton. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is on my side. <laughs> yes. Hey, I hope folks will, you know, replay this and listen to what you had to say. Have Sheriff Payton come out to your organization group, whatever, explain this to you, but this is something that needs to be done, Absolutely. folks. It yes, does. it does. Sheriff Jeff Payton, Thank Burns you, County Sheriff. Thank you for coming in and explaining that. Appreciate no problem. It. Hey, back to wrap it up right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. That's going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our guests, Tony Mayo, Sheriff Jeff Payton, and Jerry Leister. We just want to kind of reiterate uh, from Sheriff Payton's 911 interview. It's mandated by the state. They've got to put the levy, a mil, one mil levy on the ballot. If they don't get it passed, they're going to lose the 911 system that they have right now. So just something to think about. For producer, director Adam Green and Perry Varnish, we'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great place to live, work, and play. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. 
Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the classic difference for yourself.